Today we're going to view a video regarding appropriate specimen collection and labeling. The Joint Commission requires we use two patient identifiers unique to the patient when collecting blood samples and other specimens for clinical testing. Two patient identifiers are also required on the label of the specimen container. The patient's room number or physical location is never used as an identifier. Specimens are always to be labeled at the bedside in the presence of the patient. Accurate specimen labeling at the point of care can prevent many specimen identification errors and resulting negative outcomes. Carrying multiple labels into a patient room and labeling away from the bedside are leading causes of mislabeled specimens. Let's take a look at proper identification and specimen labeling and how it should be conducted at Martin Memorial Health Systems. Patients must be identified using two patient identifiers. Examples of patient identifiers are name, date of birth, hospital account number, and medical record number. When drawing blood, the patient's name and account number are used as the two identifiers. First, ask the patient to state their name and then be sure to find the two identifiers on the patient's hospital armband. Compare the patient identifying information found on the patient's armband with the information on the laboratory labels. The identification information must match for you to proceed with the blood draw. The laboratory labels also contain other important information. They tell you the laboratory tests that are ordered and the tubes that need to be drawn for these tests. When collecting multiple tubes, the order of collection is very important. If blood cultures are ordered, they must be drawn first. A clear top tube must always be drawn before a light blue tube for coagulation testing. The rest of the tubes needed are drawn in the order shown in this picture. Following blood draw, all tubes must be gently inverted to mix the anticoagulant or to activate clotting in the marble top tube. It is important to properly dispose of the needle immediately following blood draw to eliminate needle sticks. Once blood samples are collected, it is very important to label the tubes before leaving the patient's bedside. Never carry unlabeled tubes out of the patient's room for any reason. Place the label on as seen in this picture. Remember to write your clock code and the collection date and time on the label. Use a regular ballpoint pen so the ink will not smear. Finally, it's very important to thank the patient for their cooperation in having their blood drawn. And now Hattie Johnson, the phlebotomy supervisor for Martin Memorial Health Systems, will demonstrate the proper flow of the phlebotomy process. Good morning. I'm Hattie from the lab. Good morning. Can you tell me your full name? Lori Powell. Good morning, Ms. Powell. I'm here to take some blood from you. Are you okay with that? Yes. All right. Okay, I need to check your armband. Your doctor ordered some lab work on you this morning. Okay. okay. You're going to feel me go in with the needle, okay?
Are you able to hold that for me? Sure. I'm going to write my identification and the date and time on the labels. There you go, Mrs. Powers. Thank you so much, and you Thank have you. a wonderful day. Thank you. Now that you have viewed the proper flow of the phlebotomy process, let's take a look at the important steps involved. Identify the patient using two patient identifiers. Compare the information on the patient's ID band with the specimen label. Bring the phlebotomy tray with the supplies into the room. Perform the venipuncture Fill the tubes in the appropriate order. Release the tourniquet. Remove the needle and dispose of appropriately. Label tubes at the bedside. Thank the patient for their cooperation. <music>